Hello and welcome to Advent of Code in F Sharp Day 21. Um, this is another one of those uh, I already solved it, but it took me uh, a bit longer to keep it interesting for uh, uh, posting a video. So this will be another after the fact uh, summary or executive summary. Um, so 21 is about uh, finding which ingredients contain which allergens which was a bit of a, a constraint satisfaction solving kind of thing which was really interesting uh, and i solved it using a, a search algorithm so the complete depth first search with backtracking um, if we make a like a wrong assumption so i go through every uh, possible combination and if it doesn't work out i backtrack and i try something else and i go 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 and that ended up in um uh, 100 plus lines of very dense F sharp code. Uh, so yeah, and it's even like two mutually recursive functions. And I wouldn't like to maintain code like this. I would definitely not, not like to explain it to you because uh, although it is possible to brute force your way through it, uh, there's a smarter way actually. Uh, and a lot of people on, on Reddit and YouTube mentioned it. And that's actually, we don't need any backtracking at all to solve day 21. And that's what I wanted to uh, share with you and explain with you a bit. And maybe it's easier if I draw something. There we go. So these are the, uh, this is the small example uh, and it's good enough to explain uh, the general strategy. I just replaced the garbled words in a wrong, in a different language, sorry, uh, to numbers. So this is the first uh, ingredient, one, it contains ingredients one and two, and it contains the allergens, dairy, and fish. Um, we go, we we take two passes through actually the, the ingredients. The first one, the first pass builds a a list of candidates for every allergen. So, for example, uh, let's go here and let's say dairy. What are the possible candidates? No, actually, let's not do it there. I'm gonna do it uh, below. Dairy, what are the possible candidates, ingredients that could be dairy? And then we just loop over the, the ingredients or the recipes we have. So the first list contains dairy. So one or two can be dairy. And we go on. Three or one can be dairy, but we already know about one. So one, two, three. And that's enough. We don't have any more ingredient lists with dairy. So let's take it to the next one. Fish. Uh, fish can also be one or two because of the first rule. Uh, fish is also in the last one, but it's also one or two. So we're done with the, uh, fish. What's the third one? Soy. Soy is uh, only one rule that applies and it's two, three. So that's easy. So this is like phase uh, one of the algorithm, phase A. In phase B, we take these lists of candidates, ingredients per... Uh, let's see if I can draw. Yeah. We take these lists and we go over the uh, ingredient lists again. So now, for example, uh, we know that these are all the candidates for uh, all the allergens. Let's maybe scroll down a bit or even zoom out a bit. There we go. And now we just look at every allergen in sequence. So, for example, when we look at dairy, we look up all the rules containing dairy again and we try to eliminate candidates because if an allergen if we're sure that uh, an ingredient list contains an allergen then one of those numbers in the ingredient list must be for that allergen so for example dairy now we think one or two or three are, are valid candidates but when we look at uh, the first rule for dairy so now we're here we are seeing that uh, actually dairy is in this ingredient list, but it can only be one or two. So by process of elimination, it is impossible that dairy is three. Uh, we take a next rule ingredient list for dairy, which is this one. Again, three or one. So two cannot possibly be dairy. And then we found a, a hit for dairy. So we know that it cannot be any other allergen, so we can scratch. And then we continue on to the next allergen. If we only have one ingredient in the list, you know that, okay, it has to be this. And then we can scratch again. 
and this is how you can solve it without any backtracking. So you just do two passes over the ingredient lists, one to build the candidates and another one to eliminate uh, impossible ingredients. And I did this exact algorithm by using a set logic. So I keep my ingredients in a, a set, which is easy to uh, union, easy to intersect. So we don't have to write these kinds of operations ourselves. Uh, there's some parsing going on to parse it into this data structure, but it's not the hardest of parses. Then I keep, uh, this is like my, my lookup table I was explaining. So this is this, this part. I built that, uh, made mapping allergens to all the possible ingredients. Uh, this is where I generate that mapping by looping over every recipe or ingredient list. I call it recipes here, but actually it's ingredient lists. And for every allergen we spot in a single ingredient list, we grab all the ingredients and then we combine that into a single lookup table for every allergen. And then all I have to do is loop over the ingredient list a second time and uh, do that process of elimination. This is what's happening here. So I take um, every candidate I know for an allergen, but I subtract everything. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm confused because I see set intersect. Oh yeah, I don't subtract, I intersect. So whatever I see in the current ingredient list has to be, uh, it has to be, the, the, the allergens ingredient has to be in there. So that's the set intersect. And then, yeah, that's, that's it. I don't know what this complex beast is doing anymore. Oh yeah, that's that's just a recursive loop. So if, if we have solved every allergen, we're done. If we haven't solved every allergen, let's just uh, take the next uh, mapping where we only have a single ingredient. Because that's always the case. Yeah, so this is an assumption, but it holds for, for my uh, input at least, that there is always one... Actually, does it need to have... I don't think you need to have that for the generic algorithm. Now, now I'm confused as well, but anyhow, I solved it. Uh, didn't want to bore you with me typing a depth first search for hours on end. So I spared you, <laughs> spared you that. Uh, it was a fun puzzle. It was, I spent a couple of hours on it actually because of that search, but it was fun. So see you tomorrow.